Hey everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to EA Tetragrammaton, where we are playing Ur. This is turn 97! God, we're so close to 100. Holy shit. Let's go. Alright. Bunch of different things going on. We're just launching in. Seasaur 12 attacked by two horror mantises. Uh, easy peasy dead. Our god was attacked once, twice, thrice. This fucking turn. At least we know he survived the first two fights. <sighs> fucking A. Oh, wow. That's the Hunter of Heroes. Um, okay. That's scary. So he does consume soul, which soul slays, right? Um, it is magic resistance negates. This is one of the reasons why we have set up the way we have. Um, so hopefully we do not fall prey to that. Um, however, he still has a bunch of other attacks that hurt, um, that are armor piercing, um, that are horror marking. He's got damage reversal. He's a big, big, big meanie head. Okay, and we have... Very few assistants. We bought a ethereal. Iron warriors, ourselves. Strength of Gaia, ourselves. Of course. And we go in swinging. Now keep in mind, uh, we have a vine shield, which is a double up. We don't need a vine shield. Um, in fact, I really need to put a different shield on. I don't want to put on him. I need to do that before the end of this. Uh, I, I talked about that last turn, but I didn't do anything. We need to put a new shield on him. Um, so he's got a vine shield, which doesn't do anything because he already has natural protection. But he has a flesh eater, right? Which hits real fucking hard, but more importantly, more importantly, if he takes damage, he berserkazerks. So we're trying to keep him from running. Fingers crossed. Bam! 35 damage. Big miss. Big miss. Bam! 43 damage. Get fucked. Alright, nice. Okay. Um, and then next battle with our god. Really? 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 Hey, Raku, the hunter of heroes. Uh, didn't we just kill you? And, and you're, you're back again? You're, you're back again. Sweet. Iron Warriors. We have a few more bodyguards this time around. Body Ethereal, Temper Flesh. Smack, 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 smack. We've lost two bodyguards. Smack, he did. Fuck that guy. And fuck fighting him twice in one turn. Let's go ahead and just watch the third battle and see if we survive or not. Oh, thank goodness. It's just a defiler of dreams. And that that hurts me to say that, right? I think it should hurt when you get to a point where you're like, oh, thank God. It's just a defiler of dreams. It's not a hunter of heroes or the fucking the 10 astral fuck. Crikey, mate. Crikey. Alright, so Defiler of Dreams just has Life Drain and, and Astral Claw. He's super hard to hit, but he, he doesn't have much life. He doesn't have regeneration. He's just got Life Drain. As long as we get in there, we should be okay. I love his animation, though. Blah, blah. Mm. See, we didn't even need to get involved. We just Kusarikud him. Apotropics. Ap Apotropaic? I don't know how to fucking pronounce that word. I think it's apotropic. Um, but I... Why well, I have the internet. Apotropaic. Apotropaic. There we go. Nice. I learned knowledge today. With that apotropaic spear, they fucked that defiler of dreams. Good job. I'm salty on these horrors, y'all. I'm super salty. Okay, uh, so let's check our list of other stuff going on. 
Aspects, nothing, no more, nothing. Did some summon Kisurikus, voice of absolute nothing, no more, nothing, voice of absolute nothing, or Kusurikus, nothing with no more, nothing with absolute, nothing with aspects, nothing with aspects. Got a flame spirit. Oh shit, um, Enchantress 2 got attacked by Float Cats. And survived again. Even though, again, I don't know why the bodyguards are off in a bad place. But it's just a single Float Cat. We got plenty of Kusurikus. Noise. Uh, did some arcane probing, found nothing, got attacked, of course died because I'm not watching the ones that have no protection because we know they're going to die. Um, Gala 56, right, there's no way she beats six soul torns. Easy peasy, dead. Um, and now we have a battle in the trackless wastes. Wait, trackless wastes? That motherfucker attacked us! All right, so we've got this uh, this big army that's been sitting on our border for a while, led by Pazuzu, the Lord of the Plague Wind. Um, it's got a bunch of mixed stuff here, mostly High Priests of the Sun, um, with a couple of Rain Priests, a couple of Priest Kings, um, a bunch of these Zitzimidals, um, a bunch of the Ozolotls, etc. And, and a single Oniki. We got some turkeys in here too. Fucking turkeys. Uh, it's just province defense. So obviously they're going to get wiped. But we can kind of see what's going on. We've got a communion that goes up. We've got some... Mist forming. Sermons of courage. Ah, and again, here's, here's a big thing. Ooh, shit. Yeah, he can't, he can't uh, attack. I forgot, these guys don't have storm immunity. They can't fly with Pazuzu here. Ah, huh. uh, interesting. So, I might need to slightly alter my formation there. Um, We'll get to that. So we've been attacked in trackless wastes. We'll have to deal with that. We have taken over Mictlin and met no resistance. Okay. Uh, we lost some people in Trotturn. Um, a bunch of people in Serenity have thrown themselves into the Blood Vortex. So we see that because we're standing on Mictlin now. And Mictlin is where the Blood Vortex is. We've got a bunch of unexpected events. Uh, increased unrest in Perenna. Dominion change in Wood of Many Paths. And misfortune in Underspring. Deadly diseases? I meant... Fuck, I need a whole list of other things I need to check. Holy shit. We've got deadly diseases spreading in Troll Peaks and Hall Woods. We know why there's a deadly disease in Trackless Wastes. That's because Pazuzu is there. Entrance to Mictlin has been <gasps> breached. And the entrance to the fortification in Trackless Wastes has been breached. That is actually somewhat interesting, so we're going to take a look at that. Um, all right, what are we doing this turn? Um, let's start over here by looking at that whole fortification tank. So the wall integrity here is 250. If we actually take a look at the Ozolotls, them being the main force that's here, they have five siege strength. So this is incredibly high. Mostly, one, they, they have good strength, sure, but it's because they're flyers. That's why they have good siege strength. They're difficult to besiege and have an advantage when besieging others. So, normally, what we have here, we have a whole hell of a lot of people, and we've got decent siege defense. 1.3 is pretty good. Um, two siege defense on these Kusarikus. Two siege defense on the Masushus. Um, all of our Urguard, right? They have a siege defense bonus, so they have a siege defense of almost two. So we actually have a pretty pretty good amount of siege defense here, but because of the Ozolotls, their flyers, um, they count for 500, pretty much. Um, we just just couldn't 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 beat them. So what do we want to look at? I just want to look at that real quick. Um, let me make a notepad real quick. We want to uh, save that. 
I don't want to forget any of this stuff. We want to check disease provinces. Make shield for God. There was something else, which I've already forgotten. Let's see if we can figure it out. Ah, oh, um, alter formation in trackless. We don't want to alter it entirely, but we want to alter it slightly. So let's uh, talk about basic movements, and then we'll talk about actual battles, and then we'll go and do some of the itty bitty stuff. So we are sending Ishib 68 over to Sinkhole Swamp to take over the duties of our Azure Mage that died last turn. We are sending Gudu 60 into Titan's Breath Peak um, because he is dying because of the diseases that he picked up from Troll Peaks. Um, we are sending Seasork 47 and Elsham 21. Elsham 21, if this is actually really interesting, and I love this is a great example of the differing movement types and what they are they allow you to do. Seasork 47 has 25 map move. Elsham 21 has 23 map move. Elsham 21 is the one that can make it all the way to Kailasa in a single turn. Um, Seasork 47 cannot. And it is because Elsham 21 is... Uh, I think it's because they have swimming, right? Um, I think it's because they have the ability to cross a river on a map. So they can go into Whispering Waste basically, crossing this river, and then go through the Defaros and then into Kailasa, whereas Seasork 47 has to go an extra province by going through Cracked Earth, then through Belagor, then through Troea, and then to Kailasa. So that's just an interesting example to me of movement and the abilities involved in movement, etc. That's I think that's really cool. NC-13 heads to Pangaea to take over command of the uh, growing army there. And then we have a little bit of a shuffle of elders that is going into these different locations just on the off chance that we hold them. That's why I have elders. They're there to, to boost our province defense. Great. Okay. And then this guy is... Elder 23 is done in Eol, so he's heading up to Agartha just to be... a uh, Oop. I don't I don't know whatever we got two big battles potentially this turn so let's take a look at since I've got to do some adjusting in trackless waste let's take a look at Micklin first so we are actually storming the castle in Micklin this turn we can see in Swan Day he has brought his big ass army down here um, this is a mostly accurate representation we do have a scout here about 370 units maybe give or take a few we are pretty close to that as well. Pretty close to that ourselves. Um, so we've got a relatively interesting battle ahead of us. We're going to take a look at what's going on. We are storming the castle. In the off chance that he doesn't pull the trigger and attacks us, then we want to go ahead and storm the castle, right? Uh, we're leaving a single unit behind just in case we get pushed off the castle or um, if we rather if we attack the castle and then we lose and we get... Yada, 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 you know. So we'll see how that goes. Um, from a standpoint, we have, a, we have a shit ton of gems in this army. A metric shit ton of gems. Uh, we are going to blow through a shit ton of gems in either of the fights that we do. I have tried to disperse. If we get gem baited, it's going to be bad. I have tried to disperse our gems to a point to where we will still be able to do any of the important things that we need to do. But you know how the fucking AI is. Sometimes the AI is going to be a fucking asshole, and even if they have conservative gem usage on it, they're still going to use way more gems than they need to for something. We might get fucked regardless. Fingers crossed that we don't. So let's go over everything that we've got going on. We've got... Uh, Kromna is going to be doing an Earth Power, Temper Flesh, Soul Vortex, and then she is going to attack Rear, right? She is going to already have buffs on her, like um, 
army of lead. So she should have 35-ish or so protection. Um, she's going to have fog warriors up. Uh, mass regeneration won't work on her. Um, but she'll have a couple of different other things potentially. Um, so we'll see how that goes. She should be able to destroy almost anything that she touches. Right? The Holy Scourge has two attacks. Any demon it hits, it's going to do triple damage to. Um, or undead, but specifically demons because we're fighting demons. If she hits an Ozzolotl, that thing's fucking squish. If she hits, uh, if she hits a demon lord, she can squish that thing pretty fucking quick too. Um, Holy Scourge, that's the specific reason why I made one and put her on her. We're fighting demons, big deal. Um, the gore just helps add um, clear speed to her if she gets surrounded, etc. She should be in a relatively good place, hopefully, especially with the drain or the soul vortex, okay? Um, we've got a bunch of summon water elementals. We've got um, power of the spheres fog warriors going up um, as soon as we can get it up, basically. We've got a wind guy going up as soon as we can get it up. We've got a howl going up as soon as we can get it up, basically. Um, we've got a bunch of water elemental, living earth, and living air spam. Okay, living clouds. Okay, um, so keep that in mind. A whole bunch. And there's a reason for it, right? The reason being is we're trying to muddy the mixture. Get a whole bunch of living clouds, get them in their back line, um, get them stomping through their blood slaves. That's less that they can use. This battle is intended to be, if we don't win, we're trying to make it as pyrrhic as possible for Micklin, right? If we don't win, he should have barely anything left that's the idea so a bunch of living clouds are going to get in the back line and muddy the mixture a bunch of living earth is going to get in front of things and muddy the mixture stomp around and break up his ability to like mesh fold with us right um same thing with water elementals okay we are doing demon cleansing this is the big demon cleansing all demons will take double damage from all attacks. This means if we get demon cleansing off, and for example, just Kramna starts swinging that Holy Scourge, she's hitting for fuck me amounts of damage. Insane amounts of damage, right? Um, 72. Uh, with the Holy Scourge. No, 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 because that's uh, triple damage. I just doubled that. So she's hitting for over 100 damage... I mean, she's already hitting for over 100 damage on a demon with Holy Scourge. She would one-shot the tankiest of demon lords if she hits them with a Holy Scourge with demon cleansing up. Okay? Um, and that's... So, obviously, that's Kromna. That's a super special scenario. But you think, like, all of these Enkidu Spearmen, that's now 36 damage on Bronze Spears, Right? Um, that's now 44 damage on bronze hatchets. That's good shit. Okay. Um, bada 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 bada. demon cleansing should be the big, 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 big thing that hopefully allows us to just win, not, not be Pyrrhic victories. Okay. Um, more living clouds. Uh, we have our Esham 18, who's got earth boots. He's coming in with... Summon Earth Power, Army of Lead. So we should have Army of Lead on turn three, um, which should be pretty good. Uh, and then he's going to spam out some Weapons of Sharpness just to help um, help add that damage to the mix. Okay, We've got a Summon Storm Power, Power of the Spheres, Mists of the Deception. We have a large communion, and now that we have taken things like uh, mass regeneration and relief and a lot of the um like a lot of the uh resistance buffs and things like that out of the communion they no longer have to rely on that then we can now dedicate individuals to doing dumb shit like mists of deception probably not going to be useful the battle by the time something like mists of deception comes out in an in a scenario like this if we had boosters it'd be a different thing but you got to think a hundred, that's one turn, uh, two turns, um, 3.25 turns, Mist of Deception is five and a half turns into the 
That's a that's a lot of time. Um, and then it just has to happen, right? So phantasms are going to spawn just like how would spawn, etc., etc. Got some Thunderstrike. Um, got a bunch of Legions of Steel all over the place. More Living Earth. Um, more Living Clouds. A whole shit ton of Living Clouds. We are wasting. We are wasting a lot of Air Gems. A lot of Air Gems on this. Um, we've got a Relief coming out with an Army of Giants. Hopefully to just help keep our Communion in good um, health. We've got Strength of Giants, a whole bunch of Strength of Giants, more Thunder Striking, more Water Elementals. We've got Divine Blessing coming out from NC4 since uh, our other NC is doing Demon Cleansing um, with a Fanaticism following behind that. Uh, we've got a Will of the Fates coming out with a whole bunch of Enslaved Mine after that. Uh, Legion of Steel, a bunch of other stuff that we've talked about, yada 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 yada, more Water Elementals, more Thunder Strike. Um, liquid body, water elementals. We've got an Aerofend mixed in there. We've got a Storm mixed in there. We've already seen a Wind Guide. Um, so those are all just getting cast directly. Um, more Strength of Giants, more Thunder Strikes, more water elementals. We've got a straight up Mass Regeneration cast. Um, we've got a straight up Gaia's Blessing cast, and that's, uh, oh, and then a, a cause just because we had so many people in a, a communion and not a whole lot of things to do, I was just like, fine, we're gonna have one of our um, Astral 2s, so this will be an Astral 5, and it's just gonna spam Enslaved Mine, and hope we get lucky on some things. If we get lucky on a couple of um, Enslaved Mines, we could actually get some really nice units or really screw over some of the things that he's trying to do. It's unlikely, but, you know, we'll see. So that is what's happening in Micklin. Whole lot of shit. Let's pop over to Trackless Wastes and talk about what's happening there. We're sending a couple of different units in to Trackless Wastes from Jabal Kish, some reinforcements basically. NC9 is coming in with some units. Um, they will be on hold and attack. Go from there. Um, we've got Seasork 48 is just coming in as a communion slave. And then we've got Esham 15 and Esham 17 coming in with two strengths of Gaia's. And then they're doing a Gaia's Blessing and a Mass Regeneration. So that's where our Gaia's Blessing and Mass Regeneration are coming from this turn. Um, and then we're breaking siege with basically everything. Um, what I need to do, talking about changing formation slightly, is I put uh, in, the, in the mindset that he's going to try to fly and envelop me, I put most of my people on um, bodyguard. That is no longer a good plan. I still want some people on bodyguard, but we actually need to pull a fair chunk of these off because we want a force that is capable of slightly moving forward to engage the ozolotls. So we'll keep a couple her protected. Um, we don't need everything. How, how many do we have? 65, 60, 70. Hmm. Leave some on him. Because we have other individuals, right? So we're going to take some of these. Basically just do that. Shouldn't have done that. Uh, so we'll we'll have a hold and attack uh, hold and attack closest here, right? So we've got our Pegasus Riders, we've got our Mushushus, we've got uh, some Kusarikus, um, we've got a whole lot of people on um, guard commander. But now we'll have uh, about I'll put these on the other NC. Now we'll have about um, no, I'd I'd rather have about a hundred. We've got a few more to pull. Okay. And those also will be on hold and attack. Um, put enemy flyers just in case. Anyways, so um, we've got basically all the same stuff going on here. We've got... Um, 
we've actually got a relief army of giants mass regeneration army of lead uh fog warriors we've got a um for what, what's the fortune one we've got hal we've got uh we've actually got an interesting setup here with uh our our into of the moon um because she can communion master up she's going to do divine channeling fanaticism and then she's actually going to do solar brilliance i'm going to test that out i don't know if this is actually going to be good for me this is going to come after we have army of let up okay which means that we should have a very strong resistance to being blinded so hopefully we don't get blinded um but this is going to do five armor piercing damage to all demonic units all undead and demonic units that's not good i'm not gonna do that because it's five armor piercing damage to a bunch of like 30 something health in it but but we will have demon cleansing up does that count as an attack though i don't know i don't think we take the chance science fuck it man we're doing it for science. So we're going to sol Solar Brilliance and see if that helps um, just do mass damage to the overall um, mostly demon armies. Uh, this is kind of a test run because after this we have Lanka. But also um, we could use this against someone like Hinom because they have large armies of the undead. Right. So we're, we're trying to keep other options in play. The solar, solar Brilliance is on the board. Um, we're doing all the same things with... Uh, Mists of Deception, um, with Arrowfend, with Wind Guide, with Storm. Um, we're doing all the same things with Will of the Fates, um, Army of Lead, Weapons of Sharpness, etc., uh, etc., et right? Still doing a whole lot of Water Elemental Summoning, doing less living clouds less um i i don't even know if we're doing any earth elementals yeah we're doing some earth elementals um but we're we're doing less because that's really expensive on the gems and i'm less concerned about fighting this 170 unit army with our 300 unit army than i am with the 370 versus our 300 you, you get what i'm saying so, um, all right, adjustments made in trackless waste. Good. What else is going on? Um, let's look around. We are doing nothing. Actually, we don't really have a whole lot going on. We're doing a Gudu round um, in a couple of different places. Again, Gudus and Urguards trying to get up to decent sized garrisons in all the places that we're doing. The people that we have set to auto cast um, things like gnome lore or Auspex or stuff like that, as long as they're alive, I'm having them continue, right? Um, eventually they'll die to astral corruption, but again, we're we're recruiting new ones every fucking turn, so it's kind of like, eh, I'm not super worried about losing all of them. Um, I don't know that we have anything big going on in any of the outskirt areas. Um, we've got another natural nature four, so we want to take him to Ur. Really important. We want to hold on to those whenever we can. Um, this guy is actually really good too, because he got an earth random and a water random. Very strong. Yeah, I think that's mostly it. Um, other important stuff that we're doing, we do not have enough uh, blood slaves for a new vampire this turn. So we're blood hunting in full with everyone. Um, hopefully, I mean, hopefully we're definitely going to get blood, blood slaves up to another vampire in the next turn. Um, so that will be a thing that we do. And then in our capital, we're summoning, we have swapped from Enchantress 2. Um, Enchantress 2 is... more valuable to me than a flame spirit is okay so a flame spirit is just fire three enchantress two is fire three air one earth one nature one so 
those are some cross paths that I don't have access to. Those are low, um, but we could boost them up if we needed to later on in the game, right? So I want to keep Enchantress 2 safe at this point. Um, so we're going to stop doing things with her. Uh, we're going to swap to a Flame Spirit summoning Flame Spirits. So we'll see how that goes. Continuing to do all the other stuff that we normally do. Um, we are forging a Crystal Coin with the Anunnaki of Growth and Rebirth because we're going to replace the Ring of Regeneration. I think 10% um, regeneration is probably enough for Nazar the second. Uh, so we're going to put a Crystal Coin on him instead to boost his Astral up to 6. Again, just trying to decrease the opportunities for something like Magic Duel or what have you, right? Um, and we got to do a shield. So let's find a shield to do that we like more than what we are currently doing. I was thinking of doing like a Hoplon. No, I really want to do... Oh, I was going to do a Scutata, uh, but I found out... take okay we got this guy this turn I'm trying to I'm trying to Try not to fuck myself over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't math in my brain. Um, we wanna, we wanna try to get some in intus. Um, specifically, we're looking for the uh, Earth, Air cross path, um, which we have a twenty-five percent chance to get. We got it in the past, and then I think we got that into killed because I can't find her. Um, I know we have an into down here. This is into two, um, but I don't know where into one went. I think she died. So I think she was one of the ones. Um, I I kind of want another Scutata Voltarnus, um, and I need air air earth in order to do that so we'll grab an into and then we'll grab some other stuff um, basically same amount of stuff um in the meantime though i should i should make something else what what else can i make i keep looking at barrier but i don't want to spend the earth gems um hmm do I have like a death fire on anybody? Got this guy. Nope. Man, I don't I don't think I have anything cool to make. Crap. Luck could be interesting. Luck doesn't prevent instant kills, though. Does it? I don't think so. Still, luck luck could be interesting. It's better than having a vine shield. I'd rather have something like Scatata Volturnus, but... 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 But that could be useful. Let's uh, forge a luck shield. Lucky coin. And um, we'll throw that on to, to Nazar II along with the crystal coin and, and we'll see how it goes from there. Um, okay. So that's done. That's done. I think we have done everything except for check the mod inspector about deadly diseases. Because I keep saying that I want to do that, but then I keep getting. So we're going to look for events, uh, load events. They know why you have to load events on the mod inspector every single time. Events. Deadly disease. Disease. There's so many 
freaking events. I feel like the only thing we can really do is is patrol those locations or just super preach in those locations. So what do we have? We have Troll Peaks is one. I don't care about Troll Peaks though. Like that is that is not something that I give a shit about. <coughs> <coughs> and he tried to kill me in response. How rude. I do care about Hall Woods though. Um Okay. Let's try preaching with NC14 or does it make more sense to cast spells, hold an attack? This makes let's just patrol the province real quick and see how that goes. Uh, maybe we can patrol something out. Maybe it's like a cult that's spreading disease or something like that. Uh, we'll try to patrol. If that doesn't work, then you know what? We'll we'll preach with uh, Ishib. They're priest too. Fair enough. We'll do both. All right. So that'll be a test case in Hall Woods, and we'll see if we can't get that fixed. Um, and if we do, we'll try to do something about Troll Peaks. But all right, that should pretty much be it for the turn. Um, only other thing, we are completing construction nine this turn um then we're heading up to thaumaturgy 9 and then we're just kind of we're just kind of finishing things at this point we're gonna go from thaumaturgy 9 up to evocation 9 up to blood 9 oh uh, we're real close to the end um thaumaturgy 9 will get us master and slave which is potentially really good and it will get us undead mastery which is also potentially really good against some of our future opponents so We'll see how it goes but we're at the point um where everyone's gonna have everything and this is this is gonna be bonkers when when this world war blows off that's gonna be it thanks for watching i'll see you next time bye everybody